Hello everyone. So we're just rocking up to the beach to go grab a session and I figured it'd probably be a good time to walk you guys through kind of our daily rigging routine. Uh, that we do a little pre-flight check uh, that we've incorporated into our daily routine. Uh, it saves a lot of headaches down the road just because you tend to catch things before you get out in the water and you can address those little issues whether it's a loose fin, uh, a small tear in your kite, a knot in your flying line, whatever it may be. And really the whole idea of this is just to catch this stuff before you get out in the water uh, so you can address it and hopefully maximize the fun time kiting and less time swimming back in. All right, so let's get started. All right, so let's slow it down for one sec here. I brought it back in here to the loft because the first step of getting ready for any session is to pack up your gear. Uh, but before I do that, usually what I like to do is check all this stuff, at least on the board side, before I even pack it up. Uh, the reason why is if anything requires kind of more serious attention than just tightening, then I can deal with that here. I usually always try and carry the multi-tool in the truck so you can, it's enough to tighten a screw or adjust the stance and whatnot. It's just a good idea to check that stuff before you leave. So when you get to the beach, there's no surprises and you can just focus that much more on just getting ready for your session. So if we're on a twin tip here, what I'll do is just check all the mounting hardware, okay? That includes foot straps and the fins and a handle if you use one. Okay, everything looks good. So, twin tips ready to go. What about surfboard? Well, surfboard's right here. Okay, if you happen to be running foot straps, go ahead and double check the mounting hardware there. That's the stance you like. The screws are nice and tight. And then, of course, we're going to do the fin screws as well. Okay, you want to double check that there's no play in the fins. That one feels a little bit loose, so I'll just grab the fin key, tighten her up. And we're going to do the same thing on all four so there's no surprises when we get out there. So that looks all good. Ready to load up. Okay, we'll now resume our regularly scheduled programming back to the beach. Okay, so before we even inflate the kite, the first thing I want to double check is that the zipper that closes the leading edge here is closed all the way. And I can see here by the zipper cart is all the way up. The flap is closed and there's no exposed opening. You want to make sure that's closed because if it starts to open up on its own and you start pumping the kite up through flight or while you're inflating, there's a chance that the pressure from the leading edge as it's inflated will actually force the zipper further and further open and you could end up blowing the bladder open because of that. Uh, so to avoid that, just make sure it's fully closed before you start pumping, which we are. So we're all good to go. Let's go ahead and open the flap here and we can go ahead and make sure before you inflate the kite that the O-ring here is actually seated in, in place. And you need to have the O-ring in place here on the main airlock valve before you actually close this because without this O-ring, the kite may slow leak over time. So just make sure that's in place, it is. So I can go ahead and close that down and go ahead and open the top cap. And now we're ready to inflate the kite. And we go ahead and attach the pump to the main adapter on the airlock valve. And I wanna go ahead and quickly reference the pressure uh, recommended pressure anyways that uh, to pump the kite up to and it's based on size and you can refer to that here on the back of the pump and I'll go ahead and keep an eye on my gauge while I'm doing that and keep in mind this is just really a, a form of reference it's still a good idea to go by the old tried and true method which is by feel and uh, we'll double check the pressure of that uh, as we get closer to the finished inflation pressure okay so it's worth mentioning that as I'm pumping up the kite I am keeping an eye on the gauge as well as what the kite looks like as I'm inflating it so there's a one-way valve on all modern kites. So keep in mind that the gauge is not really reading any pressure now since it's not actually pumping anything and there's no resistance uh, because the flap closes as soon as you actually stop pumping. And so of course the gauge is gonna read zero. So to get a semi-accurate reading, you wanna go ahead and keep a little bit of pressure in there and keep the thing slowly moving. And you can actually see that the needle will hold at a, at a certain pressure. And I wanna match that to what the recommended pressure is on the kite. So to make sure that there's adequate pressure in the kite, uh, the old school way to do this is to put the kite up on its side like this and see if it'll actually support its own weight. And as you can see, regardless of what the pump is saying, the kite won't support its own weight and you can see that it's clearly buckling under the weight of its, you know, uh, just the material itself. So I can tell that this is underinflated. So I want to top this off till it's a nice firm pressure and it actually will stand up on its own. So we're going to top this off. So now that I've topped off the pressure, I can go ahead and retest again and now I can see the kite is clearly supporting its own weight. Um, and even if I put a little bit of force on it and try and get it to bend, it'll pop back open again, indicating that the pressure is, is good and we're ready to go. You can go ahead and cap off the top cap here. Okay, make sure everything's nice and snug, just nice, firm, kind of hand tight. You don't want to go too tight, but just that it's, you know, it's creating a good seal. Put the top cover on, velcro that down. 
And we're gonna go ahead and wanna clip off all the sprint clamps. And after I'm done pinching off all the sprint clamps and isolating all the bladders individually, um, at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and just double check the leading edge and just make sure everything looks okay, you know? Just a quick scan, make sure there's no stitches popping open anywhere, that there's no holes or rips that have gone unnoticed. Um, nothing's been dragged or anything happened since the last session, whether it was while I was packing up or uh, coming in for a self-land and you just never know. So, and at the same time, I'm just checking the toe points and the bridle lines look all good, okay? Nothing out of the ordinary. And I'll double check if your kite has pulleys on it. You wanna double check that all the pulleys are actually working, uh, spinning freely. In case they're not, an easy way to do this is just to go ahead and uh, pinch the line around the pulley and move it back and forth. And if there is any debris, that'll actually break free any kind of grains of sand or any other debris in there. And you should be able to see that it's moving nice and smooth. And that the line around where the pulley actually moves is completely clean, free, no abrasion, no anything like that. Toe points are all set. We look good to go. Okay, so with the kite fully inflated and we've kind of done a quick scan of the leading edge and all the toe points and the pulleys and whatnot, uh, the final check that I like to do is just a, a quick scan of the canopy material and just uh, the top side as well as the underside to make sure that there's no rips or tears. Uh, a lot of times a really clean slice that, uh, whether it's from rolling the kite over, rolling it up, uh, it can go unnoticed sometimes. And the easiest way to check for that is just flip the kite over. And as I'm looking up into the sky, I'll be able to clearly tell if there's any rips or abrasions anywhere. Okay, it's really easy to spot this way. And you want to kind of just scan the whole kite here and really just look for any areas. Um, it's really common to have that kind of um, on the, towards the sides of the kite. And the reason why is a lot of times people don't realize this, but if you, if you live or you kite at a place where the ground is a little bit abrasive, or even if there's sometimes debris on the beach, um, and you ask somebody for a launch, especially with a bigger kite, because they're a little bit bigger and harder to handle, people will, when they take the kite over from this position, is I see this a lot on the beach, is people will actually slide the wingtip like this, and you're just dragging across. If there happens to be a piece of glass or just a sharp stick or anything, that could put a little tear in your canopy and you didn't realize it. And the same thing, the opposite of that is true when people actually flip the kite over after you land. Um, so I always recommend to people, is, especially with the bigger kites, is you can literally just walk it over without dragging it at all and set it down. And the same thing when you go to launch somebody, walk it over so you're not dragging anything. And that way nothing gets torn, nothing gets caught anything, and you can literally just hand the kite to the person this way. Okay. So again, we just want to make sure that nothing's torn or ripped. If you do notice anything like that, we want to address that immediately and obviously not go kite on, on torn gear. If there is even the smallest slice, um, in the worst case scenario, you can put the kite down or be slow catching a kite loop and the tremendous load that goes through the canopy could actually exploit that weakest area and actually put a big, huge panel tear in the kite. Uh, you may end up having to swim back. So again, just a quick scan of the entire kite and just to address any issues uh, before you go out to, for your session uh, could save you huge headaches down the road. Okay, so with everything done on the kite and the board side, we're going to go ahead and just run the lines out now. Again, just part of your normal routine, just as you normally would be rigging. Um, I like to do the bar part last. Uh, the reason for that is, is a couple different reasons, but mainly because uh, this is what takes up the most room on the beach. And a lot of times where we kite, sometimes the beach could be crowded with people or other kiters trying to come and go. Some places only accommodate one or two kites at a time being able to launch. So because this takes up so much room, you should always do this last, uh, right before you're actually ready to go out. You don't want to lay your lines out and take half an hour to actually get to the water because in the meantime, people are tripping over your stuff and just, just more of a common courtesy thing. So let's go ahead and run this out. As I'm walking the lines out, I'm gently pinching the lines between my fingers just to make sure uh, there's no knots or snags in any of the lines. Um, and I would go ahead and feel that obviously as I'm walking these out so I know for sure. Okay, and as I get to the end, I also want to double check uh, the flying line connectors here, commonly known as pigtails. And I want to make sure that they're also they look like they're in good shape. There's no knots or tears or anything coming apart there. I'm gonna go ahead and actually lay these out next to the kite where I'm gonna connect them. And then with the front lines, you just wanna make sure that you're aware that this is a 1X flagging system. So uh, the flagging line is actually labeled with this 1X here. And so the kite will flag open from whichever side you connect this line to. Okay, so with the lines laid out, I wanna go ahead and just double check everything at the control system side to make sure that everything's good and there's no nicks or fraying in the line, that everything works. Um, and everything looks like we're ready to proceed and, and go ahead and launch the kite. So to do that, I'm checking the deep power mainline tubing, the cleat line, everything looks good here, the safety system. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do 
is while I'm here, is that I'm actually gonna make sure the safety system's working. Because you don't wanna find out in an emergency that something's wrong and you hooked it up wrong, or there was debris in there from last time and you, it went unchecked. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow the QR. It's the same whether you're on Quick Loop or Fireball. You're gonna go ahead and just push the QR away from you. Safety system opens, and this should actually flag the kite out. And I wanna make sure the flagging line is actually working. So I just slide that out and I can see that it deploys no problem. So if an emergency I needed to flag the kite, I could. So I'll go ahead and reset that. I just grab the bar here, pull the safety line back through, and then reset, of course, the safety system. Okay, we're ready to go here. Double check all the leader lines. And obviously, um, I've already checked the flying lines as I was walking the bar out anyway, so I know we're good to go there. So the final part of the check here in the control system side is the connection to your body. That, of course, is your harness. So I just wanna make sure everything's in good working order, uh, that all the straps are in good condition, nothing's fraying or about to break apart. And if it is, I wanna address that and not just chance it. Um, and I also want to double check the leash connection. I'm running the short leash here, so I want to make sure that if I needed to flag the kite out and if all hell breaks loose, I need to actually get rid of the kite, I can. Hitting QR2, I can pop the safety open, make sure that it works and it's in the right place. We're ready to go. So as you guys can see, we try to incorporate this general pre-flight check into our daily routine as kind of just part of what we do every time when we get ready. As you can see, it clearly doesn't take that much extra time. It's literally an extra minute or two. And you're just checking over a few details here and there as you go through this stuff. Um, it can really help alleviate some of these headaches along the way and hopefully help you from uh, unnecessary swims in or having gear failure because you catch these things before you go out. Hopefully these tips were helpful to you guys. And if you have any questions or concerns, you could always visit our website or email us at support at and we look forward to seeing you guys on the water.